it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and I am back with the sixth and final installment where I literally got lots of stuff from one house. Now I want to give an update of what's going on with that house. I have been in contact with, oh, uh, it's not the, oh, okay. So while I was there, I was dealing with the uh, son. His wife is the one that contacted me and really got me involved with this. So I've been, cont I've been talking with her and they've got a lot going on in these next few weeks. So I will be going back after they have had a chance to go through some of the other rooms that I wasn't able to go into, mostly kind of the back end of the house. So they need to go through and kind of sort through that stuff first. And then they said, I will definitely have first pick again at it. And actually she um, is in a lot, she's in a line of work that she can refer other people to me for this sort of thing. I won't get into exactly what line of work she's in, but yes, so they're very happy with all of that and so am I. I think it worked out very nicely and this is definitely a really good assortment of items and I'm really happy I was able to do it. Let me get on with this stuff here. Now I will be the first to admit that primitive items like that I'm about to show you is not really my wheelhouse and I'll tell you over here in the country where I am, not the country, this is the United States, but in the country rural, rural area, uh, this stuff is pretty popular and at auctions and sales I don't get to buy it because it generally is pretty desirable. So did a little research and now I'm more equipped to know what I'm talking about. I'll start off with this little paddle looking brush right here. It is a brush but it's not to actually brush the animal. This is known as, and I'll read it to you, it says the only genuine old Whittemore W-H-I-T-T-E-M-O-R-E patent wool it says. So this is a wool car, oopsie, I already forgot. Carter, Carter, C-A-R-D-E-R, -E wood Carter, wool, wool Carter. <laughs> so you don't, like I said, brush the animal. Uh, when you have your wool, you'll wash it, clean it, and then you'll take, whoops, you'll take two of these brushes against each other and it is used to make all of the wool go the same direction so that it can be spun and turned into y y what yarn twine uh, not twine yarn uh, fibers for a spinning wheel so this here goes for about five dollars online in the booth I'll probably put next to maybe eight to ten on it I think it will do better in the booth here locally to be honest so that's what that is and I did not know that so fun learning experience for all I have a couple of these yokes. So we have here this one here. People do all different kinds of projects with these and they're dirty. I will be washing my tablecloth after I get done with these videos. I need to probably spray these off with an air compressor outside. Uh, these were hanging on the wall in the house. I bought them in a big bundle and they were even nailed to the wall, straight to the wall. But this is a yoke, Y-O-K-E, and you would uh, Whole, uh, two horses would be connected with this guy, one on this and one on here, and you can pull a carriage or uh, a farm thing, plow, <laughs> with one of these. And I actually have this one here. Oh, I forgot. So people do Pinterest projects with these. You can turn them into lots of different things because of these fancy hooks. You can um, put nails on it, make it like a, a thing, entrance thing where you hang your stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to get a, trying to tell you, but I just can't get my words straight. So I've got that one. Here's another one. Same scenario, right? So those are neat. These, these sell for about $15, $20 here locally. So, so that's pretty good. Uh, I've got another one. This would make a really cool project piece though. If you wanted to hang this on a wall, you can definitely, you can put it in the bathroom, hang your towels from it, a lot of different things. Um, and then we have, an, this this yoke is a, is a harness for a single horse. And it would also have like padding that would originally been around it. We just have the wood apparatus here. Uh, so yeah, there's that, it's a different kind. Goes around the neck of Stella. Goes around the neck of a horse, like a collar. That I'm not sure how much it sells, how much that thing sells for. Probably around I don't know, 25 ish, maybe 30. 
Yeah, I'm a little bit unsure of the primitive stuff because that's not really my style. So usually whenever I'm out, I'm not even looking at those prices. I probably should though. Uh, here we have an auger with the wood handle. So that's cool. Really old primitive hand tool. Again, I'm not sure on the value of something like this. Curious actually uh, what the price is you, like in your area. I know it's gonna be all over the place, but if you wanna give me those prices down below, I'm just really curious how much they go for. I bet it's different all over the country, to be honest, based on popularity and, like I said, the area. A couple of these are antlers. Antlers, I believe, around around the, uh, like for something like this, probably around the $25 range in the booth. It's a very nice one. Dusty. Uh, I will say, I'm a kind, personally, I'm against this kind of stuff. I don't, I don't like like heads of animals, like I'm not into it, but it sells. I hate, I hate to be that person. There's that and it's popular around here. Okay, there's that. And truthfully, I mean, if you're into that, it's already done. These are old and that maybe it'll stop someone from doing it again and needing like a fresh one. I don't, just recycle the same ones over and over and then you don't have to do it as much. I don't know. Bulls, you could bull horns. And I'm not, I'm not even sure if these are tr real. I mean, I, to be honest, I've never really been close to a bull. So I don't know if these are real. Is that dirt? Oh, wow. See, I didn't wash this. Look how badly dirty that is. This side's a little bit cleaner. That's all dirt in there. I know, you're getting a hull full of dirt. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's enough of that primitive stuff. Uh, that's basically all of that that I got anyway. And then in the previous video at the tail end of it, there was a bucket that I was unsure of that I probably now know because of you guys what it was that, yeah. Um, okay, the other stuff that I got is in this tote that I'll just pull over here. So I bought five, no, no, that's wrong. I bought three totefuls of fabric and I did not know what they what were in them. I didn't even bother um, like looking intently what was in them exactly. So I just said, will you do $5 a piece on these? And he was glad to do it because they're big totes full of stuff and yeah, they were just in the way. So at the very minimum, I have free totes out of it. So those are nice. And you, a new tote is like five bucks. So the stuff in, ugh, this tablecloth is dirty. Okay, well I can't put any of this on the table now. Okay, so I pulled out of those three totes things that are desirable. And the majority of it was like old clothes and old torn up, uh, sheets and things so a lot of that was junk but i was able to pull some salvageable things out of it that i think i can sell or just use in general this is a nice dish rag uh it needs to be washed there darn it it's mint green it's not this color that's showing it's mint green and it has this kind of pink uh stitching on it it's oh that white oh I know I'm getting so aggravated about the white balance. It's mint green, trust me. It's really, really cool. So there's that one. This one is more of a tablecloth. Can't see. Let me re let me readjust. Uh, I don't know. That helpful helps a little bit. So it has all these really pretty flowers on it. There are stripes throughout. There, you can kind of see these like random and they're random. There. Yeah, they're kind of random like little little dashes of color. Okay, enough of that, you see it. That's a nice one. We have like a little dresser scarf on the smaller side. Really nice though. A few, tab a few tablecloths. This one is a big one. Most of the stuff in, in there were, was embroidered and um, I would prefer that it's screen printed. I know that it's not as personal, uh, but 
Embroidery is nice too. <laughs> so this is white, it's like a white linen and it has these pink flowers. It sort of uh, is around the outside of the tablecloth. And this is a larger rectangle size. I believe this is in really good shape though. Uh, so that's, that's a good one. Values on these things, a little unsure. The tablecloth probably, it's probably like a $20 item, that big white embroidered tablecloth with the pink flowers, green stems and leaves. Like the, the, the dresser scarf, stuff like that. I really have a hard time selling those, so they're in my booth. I just kind of put them on shelves to help brighten things up, even though they are priced for like $5 a piece or somewhere in there. Uh, tea towel, which I was happy to get. It's really starchy. It, you can almost stand it up on itself. <laughs> but we have these, uh, what are those? Apples, I guess. There's apples and it's really not that washed out looking. There we go. Get some shadows. It is sort of washed out, but it's not that washed out. And I, it could have been made like this. Greeny, gr greenish and yeah. Okay. Tea towel. Here is another like a table runner. This one has painted flowers on it, like hand painted. And it goes and goes and then at the end this end too. So it's a longer table runner or dresser scarf. Either way. Now this one is cool. This is Carolers. It's vintage tea towel. And there's the label. It says all pure linen. Parisian prints, nothing dries like linen. And it's it's Christmas, so that's awesome. And it has these carolers on it. So yeah, really happy with that. Probably the 70s time frame on that one. And it, I do have some aprons. These aprons, yeah, I mean, this one has music staffs and notes on it and instruments. Blue, look at country blue color. This one we have, 70s. Bay leaves and cloves, vinegar. Okay, that's a, that's a waist apron. Oh, here's another dresser scarf. This one has, this one's embroidered and it has like a basket with flowers on it. With the crocheted edge. Another waist apron. That's a cute one. Stripes on the bottom. Then, oh, then a quilt, which I was surprised to find. This quilt is in tattered shape, so it's a project piece. You can see it's it's kind of frayed on this edge, but not not it's not it's not terrible. But I think I could put like at least twelve dollars on it in the booth, and somebody could do something with it. It has, I believe, are these pinwheels? I don't know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not up on my quilt patterns, I'm not sure. Um, here. There's that. Again, it's not this like white looking, it's, there's more color to it than what it's showing. Here. There's a big hole right there. Okay, so there's that. It, this is sort of like the size of a a little bit bigger than maybe a baby blanket or similar. You could make a good throw blanket or if you wanted to cut those panels apart and frame them like in a frame. Uh, another tablecloth. Now this one's actually pretty cool. It's of strawberries and it's like of this bur, it reminds me of like burlap. It's not, it's a little bit lighter in color than a burlap but it's stiff. Strawberry, so it's a cream and avocado green with the strawberries. And it's a, it's a tablecloth. I believe it's also a rectangle. So that one could be good. Uh, this is another tablecloth. This one has this, kind of this green edging on it. Roses, peachy, peachy, no, orange roses, green, uh, with a green checker, mint green background that's hard to show up there. That one might be a circle. I don't remember for sure. This one I like a lot. Okay has these flowers on it. It's a tablecloth as well. I'll need to wash this one. I might just throw all those in and wash them all together with a way to get some of those stains out. I like this one quite a bit and I think, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what size this is to be honest. 
By the way, if you're interested in any of those, let me know. I can measure them and let, and uh, yeah. But I will tell you, they're not perfect. I think that last one I showed you doesn't have any holes, but there are some stains that could probably be gotten out. The rest of those don't really have holes in them, except for that one quilt that was weird. And then we have a uh, little doily to put on a shelf, probably, and let it hang over or so. Okay, so that was the fabric. Now those were all spread out in three different totes, and like I said, a lot of it was unusable. So that was the stuff that's actually usable. Okay, in here is the last of the hauls. So this is the this is it, okay? You did see this in the video, and I have not even opened this. This is a bag full of cookie cutters, and I will open it now. No, I won't. I will save this for the end, and if you want to hang around and look at what cookie cutters they're in are in there, then you can. But I'm just going to go through and we'll show you real quick. Show you what's in here. We have this aluminum star uh, strainer. I got that. This is an item that I put in the booth and it would sell for maybe five bucks. This is from the garage. I didn't get a lot in the garage, but this was neat and I liked that. I liked it because it's useful and it's advertising. It is, uh, we use the blue book, Peter Lyon. Not really sure, but there it is. It's a thermometer. A little dirty, I can wash that up and it will be ready to go. I think it'll work out well in the booth. And then this is really neat. It's an old metal sign. It's dirty, I have to wash, wash it off. No parking, bus loading zone. That's cool, and it's the older, it's an older heavy metal sign. Pretty rusty though. Uh, in the booth it will go, and I'm not sure in the value or something like that. Um, probably less than 20, more than 10. And then I got a whole bunch of butterfly gold. Uh, Corel. Butterfly Gold was also uh, a Pyrex pattern and in fact I do have some Pyrex pieces here. We have like a little creamer. First time I saw that, first time I have seen this and it, there it is and we have, or is that a creamer? Maybe that's a gravy boat and then this is a creamer. Okay and then there are some of these cereal bowls. Then we have a couple serving bowls. This I thought was really interesting. It has a clear lid on it and it's, this is probably sugar. Maybe sugar and creamer? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, whoa. Whoa, that's interesting. Is that a golfer? Or, or was that a guy looking at a telescope? It's corning on the bottom in this case. And it has a guy, whoops, has a guy kind of like looking up through a thing and it's in a, a, a rectangle. It's like a this size. Made in USA. Probably sugar, I guess, right? Yeah, probably. And then there are, I won't pull them out, there are three handled mugs and then this many uh, lunch plates and this many dinner plates. What else is in there? Oh, and then I grabbed two Mickey Mouse plates. Two of these like Mel Mac or whatever they are. There's plastic Mickey Mouse plates. I just grabbed them. I mean, they're probably shouldn't have. I don't know. Uh, I'll show you the plates real quick. This is the size of the little one, like a lunch lunch plate. And then we have these. And they're not in perfect shape. There are utensil marks, which is to be expected. Fun fact: this is actually the most the most collected Corel pattern. So there's the fact. Was it fun? Yeah, it's a very, very, very well-known pattern, Butterfly Gold, and they also had a Butterfly Gold 2 pattern. And Michelle at Thrifting 101 probably knows a little bit more about the difference between the two than I do. But yeah, there, there is a difference. All right, so now for the cookie cutters. I will go ahead and show you what's all in that bag and it, it, there's a couple other things in there besides cookie cutters i think there's some cake toppers for decorating a cake or cupcakes. okay i'm gonna do this pretty darn quickly reindeer bunny christmas tree plastic christmas tree aluminum that's cute look at that with like the little accents on it 
uh, something. A Halloween cat that says made in Hong Kong. A green bunny, plastic. The metal ones are more desirable. A spade. An angel. A star. A bear, plastic. Here's a Miro. Is it Miro? It's just a uh, thingy, icing thing. A dove. A large gingerbread with handle. Club. Cat. Another icing piper. A lion. A camel. A witch. That's kind of cool. A witch. Another piper. Snowman. Star. Circle. Turkey. Crimped circle. Don't know that shape. A heart. Plastic. Candles. Number 55 in candles. So I will save those for, ah, that's a long time. Diamond, a heart, a leaf, a York, a dog. I might put that in my collection. A little tiny witch topper. Like a, a guy working, doing something. Candles. There's lots of little figures. Okay, tree, and then we've got a pig, plastic, a rooster, donkey, a sheep, blue, red pig. There's a lot. Pig, I, I'll only show you the new ones. A lassie, is that lassie? It's like a golden, no, whatever it is. Oh, another little Halloweeny. Another dog. Lamb, donkey, a tiny rabbit, little one. Yeah, we're still recording, okay. Making sure it didn't cut out. Uh, like a tiny little guy. A train. Circle. What is that? Um, turkey. Cow. Yeah, cow. Elsie the cow. Another one. Lamb, thingy, duck. A lot of them in here. Horse, uh, donkey again, dog. I might put all these together in a lot, by the way. All of the uh, little animals. Another thingy, an animal. There's like a lot of these little flowers. You put your uh, single candle in it, so it's like a candle holder. A lot of those are in there. Squirrel, pink squirrel, that's cute. I'm making a mess, my goodness. Almost done. A billy goat with hair in it. That's a cute, that's a, that's a turkey. Another little doggy, more roosters. Oh, Halloweeny. Another witch. Pig, yellow pig, and that's it. Okay, we got it good. All right. Oh, that was a lot to get through. So if you're interested in those, let me know. Um, yeah, I'll probably group those up by animals and by the cutters. Or, but the cutters will sell in my booth. I'll know that. I know that for sure. Um, anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye bye.